there is a rule of evidence um, that allows you to make summary documentation, a summary of underlying documents. So for example, in some cases I have, there might be five years worth of bank statements. So, you know, you figure that out, that's 60 bank statements. If you get a bank statement a month, and um, if you're wanting to pinpoint different transactions in those bank, bank statements, those are, you know, important evidence, but the judge is not necessarily going to want to page through all the bank statements. So if you go to trial under this rule of evidence, you can provide a summary document which summarizes the relevant um, transactions in those bank statements. Let me look up the rule of evidence and go look it up for yourself wherever you are. Rule 1006. So Rule 1006, look it up in your jurisdiction if you're in the United States. It says the proponent may use a summary chart or calculation to prove the content of voluminous writings, recordings, photographs, or videos that cannot be convenient, conveniently examined in court. The proponent, that's you if you're trying to present the evidence, must make the originals or duplicates available for examination or copying or both by other parties at a reasonable time and place, and the court may order the proponent to produce them in court. You know, the summary documents, which are the rules of evidence in Arizona, 10, 1006, they may, it may be the same rule of evidence in other jurisdictions, um, but I have used these summary documents in the past and they're very helpful. They help me cut to the chase and they help you stay organized for the judge. And really that's the most important thing, unless you're in the jury state, um, you know, the judge is the one that you need to persuade and the easier you can make it for the judge, the better. So keep it simple.